One morning in 2010, my life completely changed. The most important trip, and also probably the one that got me into trouble, mm -hmm. was in 2002 um, to go to Palestine. Um, it was really hard. My parents really actually believed in intervention, mm -hmm. and they really believed that we needed more guns and more weapons. Meanwhile, my I remember my childhood bedroom was right next to my grandmother's bedroom. And she would have these nightmares mm. because of the war. My name is Alan Fong, and I was born in Saigon, Vietnam, right at the uh, fall of uh, yeah. South Vietnam. And I guess I would mostly identify as um, Vietnamese American and uh, activist, immigrant, uh, feminist uh, when the U.S. war in Vietnam mm -hmm. ended literally one morning in April. We were told at 10 in the morning that you had a few hours to get out of the boat at 1 in the afternoon. And to make a long story short, um, most of us got on the boat. The Lutherans in Minnesota were being told to sponsor these <laughs> Vietnamese people. So we were told that we could go to um, a state called Minnesota, which we'd never heard of before, mm -hmm. or we could wait indefinitely for a spot in California. So we chose Minnesota. At home, we never talked about the war. And to me, that was a sign in and of itself, because the scars of the war, the hurt from the war, touch my family. So I, I was involved in Amnesty International in high school, and um, Amnesty was a group that actually, or in my high school, that organized protests around the Persian Gulf War. We were literally just sitting here um, in the lobby, taking over our school lobby, and everybody who went to school that day could not avoid thinking about it. The people who were the counter-protesters would say things like, if I could, I would go fight right away. And it was like they were glorifying mm. this act of war. As a person whose family was touched very directly, nobody should glorify the act of war. So we were moving towards like the mid to late 90s, and we were looking at intervention mm. in the Persian Gulf again. Mm -hmm. So I started to go to anti-war committee meetings mm. to, to work around that issue. Mm. I think some of the most memorable ones was um, doing like a civil disobedience at the, the federal building where mm -hmm. I think we had 73 people. To, you know, having a, a march um, of, I would say, 15,000 people um, marching wow. onto the Capitol. And it was part of a worldwide movement of uh, marches and protests saying, we don't want another war. But with the anti-war committee, the most important trip, and also probably the one that got me in trouble, mm -hmm. was in 2002 um, to go to Palestine. Um, to be able to go into Gaza to see what really happened, um, to be able to go into Janine four months after the massacre, mm -hmm. um, to be in Ramallah and actually see, you know, the compound and see what happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, and then shortly afterwards, um, to see the devastation of September 11th in New York City and to see that, um, that's Gaza mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. One morning in 2010, my life completely changed. Around 7 in the morning, uh, there was a knock at our door, really a loud knock. Uh, my husband went downstairs um, to check on the door and told me that the FBI were there to see me. And so I asked them if they had a warrant. They said they did. Literally searched through everything, underwear drawers, looking through photo albums, books, and nothing was left untouched. And the creepy thing, they knew the layout of our place, so it was very clear that somebody had been in my house before and mm. told them what to look for. But in terms of um, the process since then, overwhelmingly people stepped up and stood with mm. me and with us. Yeah. And I am convinced that so many of us will be here today, literally prepared to have to spend some time in the jail cell for not testifying mm. because there was no way. I was going to give them any information because there was no information. Mm -hmm. But that trip is one of the most important things I've ever done in my life, and I mm -hmm. don't regret it for a minute. All of this ugliness is happening, you know, with what's happening with um, breast mm -hmm. with what's happening in Gaza, um, to still see the laughter and the spirit of the people in Palestine. That's why we have to keep working. When I've met Vietnamese people from Vietnam, <laughs> and there's like, we knew that in the belly of the beast, we have sisters and brothers as well. Mm. And um, 
and that means a lot to me that that internationally all around the world we are a sisterhood we are a brotherhood of people who are standing for human rights 